Old X. Codex Tyranids, 4th edition. Transcripts 19673Z to 259333ii073399.m41. Written by Phil Kelly and Andy Chambers, with additional text by Andy Hoare and Graham McNeil. Pages 26 and 27. Narrated by R.J. Bailey. With great thanks to Alistair for donating this copy of Codex Tyranids. Transcripts 19673Z to 259333ii 0733998.m41 Subject, Species 43798, Tyranid, Tyran, Tyrant, Xenos Rating, Caucus Epsilon, Closed Dissemination, Cross-Ref 2, Inquisitor Crippman, Munitorum Strategic Intelligence Collective, 827-11, Stroke Order of Xenox, Strategic Extrapolation, Updated Threat Evaluation and Preliminary Results of Remote Prognostication Studies into the Ongoing Threat Posed by the Tyranid Hive Fleets. Overview This report to be read in the context of Inquisitor Crippman's recent submissions to the Strategic Collective. Author assumes reader to be familiar with these, and with all previous transcripts, 1853A through 14437 Omega. The results of our previous studies into the strategic ramifications of the Tyranid Hive Fleet's incursions have, uh, to a large extent, proved accurate. To summarize, our strategy in this regard has been the doctrine of biomass denial. A Tyranid Hive Fleet must expend a staggering amount of energy in the taking of one of our worlds, provided our forces are able to mount an effective defense. Frequently, we have been able to draw the Hive Fleet into committing ever-increasing reserves of energy into taking the world, at which point we attempt to withdraw the bulk of our forces and deny the Hive Fleet its prize, by way of enacting exterminatus upon the target world. This has the effect of critically draining the Hive Fleet's resources, as it has no biomass with which to replenish the energy expended in the taking of the world. Though highly effective in the short term, the doctrine of biomass denial cannot, in the opinion of the strategic collective, be sustained indefinitely for a number of reasons, the most pressing being the effect on the morale of our forces. Though every man within the ranks of our fighting forces knows that his duty is to kill and to die in the name of the God Emperor, it is an unfortunate reality that troops do not always fight at optimum efficiency when they are aware of the full and uh, horrifying nature of their enemy, and of their own chances of surviving a confrontation with it. This is particularly applicable to the forces of the Imperial Guard. On a number of instances, reports of the sad state of such Adeptus Astartes chapters as the Scythes of the Emperor and the Lamenters have reached our line troops, spreading crippling despair within their ranks. Furthermore, it is becoming apparent that such a strategy will, in the long run, prove too costly, for the Imperium does not have an endless number of worlds that can be sacrificed in such a manner. With our worlds spread so thinly across the void, each one lost is irreplaceable. I submit that there are undoubtedly more Tyranid ships than there are worlds. There may, in fact, prove to be more Hive fleets than there are worlds. On the phenomenon of immunity to certain methods of exterminatus. Reports have reached the strategic collective of a number of instances in which Tyranid bioforms have, against all previous precedent, survived the exterminatus of a world targeted by them. 
such a claim, taken in isolation, would be rejected as preposterous by cynical adepts. Yet the evidence is plain, and in one case comes directly from Inquisitor Cryptman, see subfile TY stroke Z23 stroke K8836554. There are two reported methods by which Terranid creatures have survived the destruction of a world. The first, which has been confirmed by Tethris and Kalos Delta, and is suspected at Lamarno, is achieved by way of smaller bioforms, such as Reapers, burrowing deep beneath the world's crust there to enter a state of hibernation until such time as the presence of life upon the surface is detected. At Tethris, it was the actions of an Adeptus Mechanicus Explorator team that stirred the surviving creatures to action, triggering them to emerge from the desiccated ground and attack. It is not known how the survival of just one component in the Hive Fleet could lead to the rise of a force sufficient to retake the world in question, but, given past precedent, the Collective are not prepared to reject the notion that such a thing is possible. The second observed manner in which Tyranid organisms have survived exterminatus was reported to the Strategic Collective following a Death Watch mission to the world of Ariadne V. Following Exterminatus by way of Damnatus pattern mass yield cyclonic saturation, the surface of the world was reduced to drifting ash, the atmosphere entirely seared away. Yet uh, picked logs of the mission show what was at first believed to be a natural rock feature rising out of the swirling dust storms. Closer inspection revealed the truth. The structure was in fact a member of the Carnifex genus, which had survived the cataclysmic effects of the cyclonic torpedo, and entered a state of dormancy within which it could mend the grievous wounds done to it. The moment the creature detected their presence and began to stir, the kill team called down a melter torpedo strike from their cruiser in orbit. Though the beast was destroyed, Ariadne V is declared Perditor, for, if one such bioform can survive, then how many more may go undetected? The instances make it clear to the Collective that no consideration should be given to the recolonization of any world touched by the taint of the Hive Fleets. For, even should the ultimate sanction of Exterminatus be enacted, there is sufficient cause to doubt its total effectiveness. All such worlds are to be declared Perditor, on pain of death to any other than those authorized by this collective to step foot upon them. The Hydra Effect It has come to the attention of this station that, upon the extinction of the class of Xenoform known as Norn Queen, a psychotemporal event approaching level Gamma 12 is generated, a level sufficient to temporarily obscure the most blessed light of the Astronomicon. It is our belief that this phenomenon represents the death knell of said Xenoform, and that its purpose is to trigger those bio-vessels that intercept the signal to calve. This we have dubbed the Hydra effect, for, upon the death of one Norn Queen, a number of others are carved, and thus the process of our demise is merely slowed, not counter to recent communications, stalled. Extrapolation It is now known that three major high fleets have to date launched attacks upon our domains, and no effort has been spared to extrapolate the long-term ramifications of the pattern of these incursions. 
The results of our studies, though far from conclusive, indicate findings that are dire in the extreme. It is the belief of this collective that the hive fleets with which we have made contact represent not discrete and separate units, but fundamentally coordinated elements of a whole. It is our belief we have yet to make contact with this whole. In short, the hive fleets we have thus far encountered represent but the vanguard of a far larger force. They are but the talons on a rapidly constricting claw, and our galaxy has yet to feel the full might of the hive mind's main force. The ramifications, then, are clear. In the past 250 years, we have been engaged upon a war in which we considered victory a possibility, provided we effect nigh intolerable sacrifices. But should those fleets we have encountered prove the merest fraction of a terrible whole, we have, at best, a century before the full force is brought to bear against us. It is the belief of Strategic Intelligence Collective 827-2 stroke that current mobilization levels will need to be increased a minimum of 500% if we are to even stand a chance of slowing the advance of the hive mind. Every able-bodied man and woman on every world in Ultima Segmentum, Segmentum Pacificus, and Segmentum Solar will need to be drafted into the Imperial Guard if we are to have any chance of repelling this foe. Even without the predations of the traitor legions, the Orcoid Menace, and a hundred other foes, our continued existence as a species appears now tenuous at best. I commit our souls to the Emperor, for only faith in him can save us. You have been listening to Oldex, Codex Tyranids, 4th edition, transcripts 19673Z to 25332-073398.m41, written by Phil Kelly and Andy Chambers, with additional text by Andy Hoare and Graham McNeil, pages 26 and 27, narrated by R. J. Bailey. With great thanks to Alistair for donating this copy of Codex Tyranids. Thank you to Phil Kelly, Andy Chambers, Andy Hoare, and Graham McNeil for writing the fiction I grew up with. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a review where you found it, or like, share, and subscribe on YouTube, depending how you're listening. This production, like all of Oldex, is entirely unofficial and uncommercial, from an out-of-print publication, is a derivative work with all copyrights owned by Games Workshop, and is a celebration of the hobby and lore I grew up with. If you have suggestions for other old Codex fiction for me to narrate on this podcast, you can comment, contact me on Twitter at rjbailey, or email robertjbailey at gmail.com. Links are in the show description.